Hello everybody, welcome back to the Film Fan Theories Iceberg. Uh, we're completing the iceberg today with tier 6, I apologize for the delay on this video. But uh, yes, we'll just jump right into it, I hope you guys enjoy, and yeah, again, I'm sorry for the delay. Yeah, let's get going. The Angry Birds movie is right-wing propaganda. So basically, it's uh, everything's in the title of this one. Uh, because the characters talk about certain things or propagate certain values, people think it's right-wing propaganda. This is usually the case, as we've seen in the other tiers, uh, for kids' films or kids' movies or animations like this, that people basically make the assumption that they're right-wing propaganda, they're trying to manipulate kids, you know, brainwash people. Obviously, it's ridiculous because of... I mean, it's an Angry Birds movie, like, seriously. But it's interesting, uh, as, as all of these are. I don't think it is right-wing propaganda for obvious reasons. I mean, wouldn't they put it in some other kind of content? Like, wouldn't they put it in, I don't know, anything that's more popular than the Angry Birds movie? Do you know what I mean? And if they're paid off to, to do that, like... It's really not gonna, I don't think they're gonna really believe that they're gonna yield results from that, given that you know, it's an Angry Birds movie. It's not like a Pokemon movie or something, like a big franchise. It's like a small thing that like didn't even need to be made into a movie, quite frankly. The Real Journal of the Wills. So basically this theory speculates the existence of a supposed authentic Journal of the Wills uh, as a source material for Star Wars, separate from George's uh, original vision, creative vision. Uh, it's based on the idea that he might have drawn inspiration uh, from ancient texts, or real, actual real texts, real world source material to create Star Wars, which is somewhat true actually, so that's based on reality. He did base it on myths and legends. So like the reason people bring this up is because terms like Journal of the Wills in the original Star Wars script uh, are suggestive of hidden or authentic sources. And this one's kind of based in reality so it's more easy to believe because yeah as I said we know that he based uh, his films on fact or not fact sorry on uh, actual documents or not documents but actual myths legends right it's about religion it's about legend so that makes it more based in reality which then in terms of the leap that he basically, you know, made it based on that, I don't know, it's a bit, like, far in terms of the accuracy of that, like, we'd have to have access to that document, we'd have to have access to that story for us to know, and he, there, subsequently, he would have to have access to that uh, uh, kind of story for which he could pull it from, and more or less what they're saying, plagiarize, right? And as far as I know, I don't think there's any myths, there are any myths that are exactly like Star Wars, because again, yeah, we know about it, right? So it's more of a speculative one, but um, it's interesting to think like one of the greatest movie franchises ever made is simply a myth from uh, ancient texts, and that's it, do you know what I mean? Riddler and Carmine know Bruce is Batman. So we obviously get the big hint, spoilers for the Batman, that Riddler knows uh, that Bruce Wayne is Batman throughout the sort of end of the second act uh, or the middle, no, I think it's at the end of the second act. Uh, we see the suggestive uh, idea of, you know, I know the real you, I know who you are uh, through uh, Riddler's pictures and everything and uh, Bruce being crossed off and Bruce being on the posters that he might know Bruce Wayne is Batman, right? It's a big, big suggestion there. Um, the reason that I think it could be possible is because we know Riddler is very meticulous in when he uses information, when he uh, exposes people. He knows what exactly when the time is right to uh, expose these things, right? To get what he wants in turn by, by exposing those things. So it could be possible that he's waiting for the right time, possibly with his collaboration with the Joker. Maybe even he, you know, deliberately got himself, well, we know he deliberately got himself caught. And he wasn't even, I don't think, planning on escaping because he said we could be safe here when he's talking to Batman when being interrogated. So maybe he was doing it deliberately to team up with Joker. Who knows? Um, it's definitely a possibility that he was he's now waiting to expose him and he just he's teasing him because he knows 
he knows that he knows uh, like Riddler knows that Batman knows he knows he's uh, Bruce's Batman and he's waiting for the right time so that's interesting and in terms of Carmine Falcone there's an amazing uh, Riddler Reddit uh, comment that made me think this the scene of his death is very reminiscent of uh, Bruce sit- standing on the stairs watching uh, uh, his father um do surgery on him uh uh, like he was like before when he when he was shot so that makes him think and you can see a shocked expression when he dies that makes him believe hold on this is a bit similar here this is bruce wayne and therefore knows he's batman just before he dies and it would make sense it's it's a really cool symbol either way and a really cool uh heart back to uh, that and use sort of using that in a sense to make him believe that he's uh, he's Bruce Wayne. Although you know it was used really well in the film, uh, and also was a really good reference to the Long Halloween. Not slagging it off, of course. I love I think it's perfection. Pinocchio is about pedophilia. So there's a specific scene I'm sort of talking about here where in the Pinocchio movie. One of the characters says, um, bad boys go to Pleasure Island or something. Bad boys are sent there. And obviously Pleasure Island could be, there's many people, many people think that Pleasure Island is Epstein's Island, um, which is also kind of ties into this theory. But uh, in the original story, it's actually about re- taking revenge for a revenge fantasy, sh- fantasy showing consequences for bad behavior. Um, obviously with his nose and everything, right? So what if it's actually about those people liking that being... I'm not going to say it too much because I'll get fucking blocked from the internet. Uh, and th- we all know there are some weird sh- things in Disney movies, you know, the... Uh, the suggestive stuff the there was that the stars uh, in lion king said sex there was that one bit where it looked like the um in i can't remember which film but he looked like the person who was marrying uh two people had an erection it's it's not funny because it's made for kids but it's um it's very interesting because we know that they're capable of doing this kind of thing uh, in terms of um implementing those kind of suggestive themes in their films so i don't know it's up to you to decide this one because it's so cryptic the fox and the cat also are in the disney versions are portrayed as thieves and sex traffickers kind of because you know obviously they that's their job they they basically take they lure they literally lure him with candy pinocchio with candy cigarettes and promise of no rules uh and then obviously the the evil man said stupid that's it stupid little boys go to pleasure island uh children lose their innocence as well as a big theme pinocchio never coming back as boys which is something that they say as well he says they they don't come back as boys they come back as men i think is something and the uh, uh there's also a dark implication that money is power uh sometimes used for evil i think it's good that disney are putting it in if they're putting it in for the right reasons i think it's good um to expose that but either way, obviously, it's a kid's film, so it's probably just a coincidence, but also kind of makes you think a bit. It's interesting, though, as, as I always say at the end of every fucking series, our theory, I need to shut up because I'm saying. Star Wars original editions never existed. So this is just a mental one. I don't believe this one at all. Um, people basically say that the special editions, uh, Star Wars the original editions without the george lucas fired bullshit special effects is uh 100 fake basically which is fucking bullshit um people testify who've seen the original version that different parts of the score are different there are things that were cut out there's actual evidence of the original special editions that people have scanned um that where you can see the different versions the original version and the new version so what they fucking made that all up and then do you know what I mean? ridiculous so this one's just i don't believe this one so i'm not even going to give it any more time of day i think it's stupid machete will cause a race war so machete is a robert rodriguez film primarily viewed as a comic book sort of revenge fantasy like pinocchio just talking about revenge fantasy 
Um, and it's basically uh, people are saying, like right wing people say, that the film portrays virtuous Mexican day laborers in conflict with villainous drug lords and murderous Anglo border vigilantes using exaggerated and style stylized violence. Basically, some conservative, pardon me, critics, uh, like fucking Fox News, they're all right wing cunts. Uh, blah 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 blah. They basically say that it's uh, trying to cause a race war because it's anti-American. Blah blah blah. It's but really it's just about Mexican people, you know, having more power than they do because they're minorities. So as soon as minorities, you know, basically uh, say, oh, we don't like this, or they try to make a film about it, all these right-wing cunts just come in and go, oh, it's an anti-American. Like, well. We all have a right to an opinion. This isn't fucking 1984, Georgia, or Ali. Fucking what? What? So we can't make any films anymore, can we? And uh, there were riots at the time as well uh, that people think are directly linked to the film. Um, I think again, it's just. I think Robert, Robert Rodriguez is just an amazing filmmaker who wants to wants to make films and wants people to think. I really don't think he would want to create a race war. He seems like a very fucking chill guy if you've watched any interviews with him. He's a very inspired, chill, relaxed guy. I mean, he's like the last person I'd imagine to want to cause a fucking race war. Um, so yeah, I think it's just based in, the, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. They haven't done their research, clearly. Uh, although I can understand why they think that it's somewhat because of there were riots at the time, but that doesn't mean they're directly linked. So yeah, this is all kind of political stuff that I'm not too interested in, but it's interesting how much of an effect a film can make. That is the interesting part, because um, so many films have made, have had big effects on people, uh, on the political climate, on the economic climate, and that's what they're for. And if as soon as you take that away, you take away freedom and you take away the right to think basically and it becomes orwellian like i said so yeah the dark knight rises is with the obama campaign so this is all starting to seem very right right wing stuff this is kind of similar to the machete one because basically the idea of this theory is because basically <laughs> vain has a name that is similar to an uh company associated with Mitt Romney who's a uh, part of the I think something to do with the Obama campaign or something I'm not good with politics on this he questioned whether the name basically the guy wrote it questioned whether the name of the villain was accidental which it was Bane was around a very very long before uh, the fucking Obama campaign Conspiracy theory extends to the previous appearance of Bane in the 1997 film Batman and Robin, which Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney are fighting, basically, because uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Republican and George Clooney is a liberal activist or whatever. So it's like symbolic of, oh, we're beating the Republicans. It's just ridiculous. And he, again, the guy who wrote this article is pointing at sinister connections by pointing out the British origins of the film's director, Nolan, and cast member Christian Bale, Mike Payne, and Tom Hardy. I don't see how that, them being British, has to do with their political connections. That's just fucking racist, xenophobic, in a way. Fucking hell. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous, this one. I'm not even going to give it any more time of day. Fucking hell, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, Bane came out. Bane was around a long before this. Bane was around in... I think Bane came... Bane was first shown in the Nightfall storyline, which was about 80s, I think, 70s maybe. Um, it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Danny has been sexually abused by Jack. So it's obvious in the film something's going on between Danny and his father, Jack. Uh, we can see there is some sort of abuse going on with his anger and just the way he, he treats Jack, uh, Danny. So here are some big pieces of, of evidence. The bear costume being a dog instead of a bear, as it was in the book. So that could mean, oh, it's like more of a childlike thing. Um, the bear motif also shows up a lot in bedroom scenes with Danny, which clearly represents the location of the abuse. Uh, by the way, all of this is uh, cited in the, the where I got all of this is cited in the description, as it is usually. Uh, also, the fam framed picture of two bears, one lower and one standing, could be a comparison to the disturbing bear costume scene. 
Uh, Jack is also reading a Playgirl magazine with one of the articles titled on the cover being Incest, Why Parents Sleep With Their Children, which we all know. Um, Kubrick is very, very meticulous with his props, with his imagery, with everything. So we can't just brush that off. Uh, although it might not suggest their relationship is like that. It might just be a hint towards the metaphorical uh, uh, connotations of their relationship. It might not mean that that's actually happening in the film. Uh, the scene with Danny talking about Tony is also one, could be one big innuendo. Uh, first, he doesn't have any, he's basically in his underwear, which is weird. Uh, he covers his groin area in a similar way to Jack in a scene between him and Danny. Uh, it's just a very, very weird, uh, some very weird sort of iconography. That is hard to overlook and we know obviously Kubrick he's not afraid of, of showing these things in his films and he's not afraid of tackling these big issues in modern society and any society um, we, we definitely know that with Clockwork Orange all of his films uh, also the Danny the shot of Danny brushing his teeth being similar to the shot of the bear scene is very weird the woman in room 237 is like could be a manifestation of Danny's disgust with his fa father after the abuse there's, there's many things um, that I've linked. The uh, There's an amazing article on this, uh, but I forget his name. Um, but he's an amazing, uh, he does amazing analysis of films. So I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, but it's, it really, you, it really makes you think that perhaps there's something more to this. And perhaps, uh, yeah, that is happening, but... You know, we know Kubrick doesn't fully uh, address these things. He sort of layers it in his films. Every movie is real. So here we are. The final, final, final theory. Uh, I was going to do some more dark ones for this tier, but I decided then I decided to sort of defer those. And um, they were more related to uh, sort of what happened behind the scenes of the film, which technically could go in this uh, this video, but I just didn't, I just wasn't up for the darkness that came with it, really. I just decided to take him, take him out. It really fucked up um, real events that, that happened. So we're gonna get into the final theory. So I, I did a lot of research into this one, actually, and I came up with a big theory um, that essentially there, Basically, when we look at a black hole, it's not completely black. And it's actually, there is actually gray matter, and just excuse my sort of how I uh, discuss this, how I talk about this, because I'm not a physicist. But essentially, there is, in a black hole, it's not completely black particles, there are gray particles. And when we see those particles and they come out of a black hole, they're 2D. Now, my, how I link this to this theory is perhaps films are real in another universe and they're streaming back at us uh, through black holes, right? Because we know there are basically other dimensions that are 2D because the particles are 2D when they come out of the black hole. So what if every film we see is real what if every film we see is just another dimension and it's almost streaming back at us through a higher dimension that we can't see and that's how we get the ideas because they're actually real um so that is something to definitely think about there's also the idea that is very plausible that our dimension is a hologram that our dimension is a hologram and this actually plays into the black hole formation because basically it wouldn't make sense that we're seeing these dimensions when black holes uh, this black hole that they're looking at represents life before uh, we existed before the big bang before creation so it would make sense that every the, the extra dimensions are are just holograms and that could also tie into the fact that you know we actually could be living in a 2D world and everything else is just a hologram of projection. So that is very, very interesting to think about. And it really makes you wonder about the universe and about our reality, our existence. Um, 
but the counter argument obviously is uh, like you're, this is ridiculous what the fuck are you talking about there's no real evidence that, to suggest to link that with films being real but but that's no fun is it you know what I mean uh, yeah, what, what if we're just a lowly reality for a much more dense and higher dimensional world? You know what I mean? What if we're actually a smaller slice of what is something else? Or what if we're more than another dimension that's only 2D? The entropy of the objects for which are 2D. Um, yeah, makes you, makes you really wonder. Um, yeah, what if... Everything is real. All films are real. Who knows? Think about that one. <laughs> and that is the end of the film fan theories I spoke. Now this has been absolute, an absolute ride and a half, guys. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for the support. Thank you all so much for being here. I might be doing another iceberg. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, I really appreciate it. And this has been fucking crazy, man. It's been crazy. Talk to you guys later. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll see you out there. Neon Hunt.